Let's face it, blackouts, higher bills, James, nothing new in this. We've been talking about this for months on the Hardgrave program. We know it's coming. Gary, when uh, Anthony Albanese promised the people of Australia a $275 discount on their electricity bills, only 33% of people had the confidence that he would deliver it at the election. And of that 33%, <laughs> exactly. no one thought he was going to go out and borrow the money, $1.5 billion of borrowed money, to probably give to a quarter of those people who voted for him. Because let's face it, this is only going to apply to low-income households. Now, anyone can do the math on $1.5 billion that's been borrowed. The interest on this over the next 12 months, let's use round figures at 5%, will be $75 million in additional interest that the country has to pay. Someone's uh -huh. got to pay for that. So no one expected him to go and borrow the money. This is just fulfilling a false promise from the election. This election, uh, this, this uh, piece of legislation, let's face it, uh, we didn't get it until 9 p.m. the night before it was yet to be passed. There were so many amendments upon amendments upon amendments. This is dodgy, dodgy legislation. Half of Labor's own backbench didn't even yeah. know what the bill was. They're cranky. The opposition's cranky. The crossbench is cranky. And I think the Australian people, after a couple of months, are going to be even more cranky. They've been sold a dud. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bronwyn Bishop, let's face it, the first time you can't get gas for your barbecue, as plebeian as that may sound, uh, let alone gas for industry, you've got to blame this, this, this government. Uh, it really does strike at our national sovereignty. We've got this weakness now because of this government-induced energy policy failure. Well, that's correct, Gary. And uh, everything that uh, James just said is absolutely spot on. I mean, just think about it. This goes very much into the category of being seen to do something. He made that promise, Mr Albanese made that promise of reducing electricity prices when the budget told us they're going to rise. So they're going to rise come what may. And he's going to claim, well, I brought it down because the rise isn't as bad as, I, as we thought it would be. I mean, that's just a non, not a proper argument at all. In the meantime, the gas industry is in turmoil. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, Gary, 60% of all the electricity that we are using today still comes from fossil fuel. We are going to be going on yeah. using yeah. fossil fuels for decades to come. And this wish and a prayer that somehow they're going to erect enough windmills and enough solar panels and build enough uh, poles and wires to take, uh, in it, to take the energy uh, which requires inertia and, and uh, is lost in this at the moment, the turbines are spinning. Um, it, it, yeah. it's, just, it, it's just a wish and a prayer. In fact, you could say our whole energy system is put together with blue tack and fuse wire. And there are going to be so many people who are going to be hurt by this. And it's driven by ideology. It's not driven by economics yeah. and, uh, and, and engineering. It's driven by ideology. And the Greens are taking their pound of flesh. And they seriously are. They well, hate I, um... this country. They want to abandon uh, the standard of living that people in this country enjoy. They're internationalists. And don't forget, Albanese is an international socialist. You know, the sort that was advocated by Trotsky, hence his nickname was Trot. And it, it doesn't yeah. go away. This is a very left-wing government. That legislation, we don't know the half of it yet. It goes way beyond 12 months. Uh, it, it gets into the area of something called a reasonable price on gas. Um, the interference and the state interfering uh, in this area, why not another area? Uh, somewhere along the line, there'll be some legal arguments about what power the Commonwealth has or hasn't got. Uh, but uh, at the moment, we're arguing on a point of principle. And the fact of the matter well, is but that no, the head of... No, there's the head of Santos yeah, got there's it right. There's no real principle at work. Well, yeah, I, I think that's right. There's no real principle at point at all here, James. The fact that it was rushed, it was delivered with no real discussion. It was about going into Christmas with... Oh, that's it, we've dealt with energy policy, everything's going to be cheaper maybe in six months' time. But no one's looking at the huge subsidies. No one's looking at the way in which we've, no. we've, we've kind of sugar coated the real cost of this. Uh, and yet, if we actually got government out of the marketplace, there might well be a change in the way the whole market actually worked. The market might work far better as a result.
Where does this end, Gary? Uh, do, do we get five years down the track and we discover that we haven't met our targets on electric vehicles? So all of a sudden, Mr Albanese, if he's still a, a prime minister of this country, does he then tap on the door of Mrs Reinhardt and Mr Forrest and BHP and say, I'm sorry, you can't sell your iron ore any more than a, a cap price as well because we need all that steel as cheaply as possible to build electric vehicles. What people don't understand is this is a sugar hit. It is a very mild sugar hit at that that they won't get until, if they're lucky, the second quarter of next year. Uh, the other issue that I really see here is as we go down this slippery slope of transitioning to wind and solar, we've got to build redundancies. They will not work of a night time. In most cases, uh, the wind even drops down. No. If you're a sailor, if you're a pilot, you know the wind drops down of a night time typically. Redundancies are important and there will be a greater need for us to rely on gas as time goes on. If we're going to drive those gas producers or gas miners out of the market here in Australia, God knows what's going to happen. Now, I know that the gas industry do need to be reined in a little bit. Labor were responsible for the PRRT, which exists and has created uh, hundreds of billions of dollars worth of tax credits in this country for those gas miners that are receiving a 15% uplift every year on that investment, which means they will never pay tax in this country. That should have been the first thing addressed. And we should have also addressed these retention leases. There's more than 30 in the North West Shelf. If there is a supply issue, don't renew the retention leases. Put them into development. The more gas in the market should actually ease the price. Exactly. Yeah, you'd make you'd make that's just simple basic economics. I mean, look, there's lots to talk about on this, but it's fair to say that I don't get what the Western world is doing to itself on multiple fronts. Australia, I think, is running about a year or two behind where Europe's at on this. They're now starting to dig up coal again. They've rediscovered uranium all off the back of uh, the Ukraine inv invasion by Russia. But